All right, we're back on the investigation of Ometiatu. This is one of my favorite links. I'm going to go through a couple of links. Ometiatu, an Aztec power. So, if it's an Aztec power, it's also a Mayan. It's also an Incan power. Was thought of as being simultaneously male and female, with the names Omitikutli and Omesi Hawatu. Hawatu. Neither were much represented in Aztec art. Could this? have something to do with it. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 15. Take careful heed to yourselves, for you saw no form. When the Most High spoke to you at Horeb out of the mist of the fire, neither were much represented in Aztec art Though perhaps in part because they could be conceived more like abstract concepts than anthropomorphic beings. That's a lie. This right here, we're going to skip down a bit. They existed above and beyond all the cares of the world with no interest in what actually happens. That's also a lie. I'll take a sip of my Moshe coffee. All right, y'all, get your Moshe coffee. See Demetrius Ross. Carp and zinc. Chloride. I'll uh, see yourself the real. Now we're going to go back up. And this is going to explain why those first two sentences were a lie. They represented the creative energy or essence from which the power of all other gods flowed. See that? They represented the creative energy or essence from which the power of all other gods flowed. Hmm? Ometiatu. Male form, female form. Hunapku, Hunapku. Okay, we're going to get into this and see how. Uh, we're gonna take a look into how they actually did it. Not at, not at, not how, but uh, we're going to substantiate how they played a part in disconnecting us from our parents above. Let's get this right here. Story and origin and simultaneous opposites, male and female. You see, this is the signature of Adam and Eve. You see that, don't you? Not male and male, not female and male, but it takes two to tangle, and they are inseparable. Ometiatu represented for Aztecs the idea that the entire well, let's just say everything was composed of polar opposites. All right, we're going to get into ancient dyads. And we're also going to have a conversation with our parents above. I believe that Ometeatl was the very first god or power, a self created being whose very essence and nature became the basis for the nature of. 
all that we see. Shalom on to the tribe. Ari Free, my nigga Nine Spiral, who just got out of YouTube jail. All right. I believe in that earlier uh, piece, I said not male and male and not female and male. But what Nine meant to say was not male and male and not female and female. All right. And that's the beauty of pre recordings. I, hey, look here, man. The nine is cooking, man. This is Ometiato part six. All right. And we're going to get to understand the nature of our parents above. All right. We didn't know. We didn't know. Now we do. Let's go. All right, let's cook, let's cook. Uh -huh. Let's lay the foundation. The Mashika Aztecs, Mayans, Incans, all right? Same people. Different tribe of the 12 tribes of Yasharal, that is, all right? Are well known for worshiping a large family of gods with a little g and goddesses. You see this bullshit? That's bullshit, and they know it. We don't have to goddamn prove this. Common sense can prove this. Just this sentence alone. Disproves that myth. All right. Up at the top and behind the scenes, many scholars have claimed was a mysterious dual ruach. You see that? Ometiatu, omnipotent, and omniscient. Creator of all that exists. All that exists. All right. Let me get this damn phone out of here. Let Free that nigga nine spiral, all right? I was in YouTube jail all last week, all right? Free my nigga nine spiral. A nine dot yellow dashi. Yet the Aztecs apparently didn't directly worship, build, dedicate temples to. That's a lie. Or even refer in their writings and the sculptures to Ometiato. We wonder why. Because we haven't even seen the damn books. We wonder why. That these nations would descend on one damn continent. And remake remix one nation's history so did Ometiato really exist alright what else we need out of here da 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 da, -da. It gets into how they was trying to change. You know what? I got something. Do I need this right here?
Let's get this right. In terms of the word itself, no one disputes the profound Nahuatl concept, uh, Tiatu, which actually means cosmic energy. Okay, they got a hand down here. Cosmic energy. All right. God, goddess, God, goddess, life, creator, framer, and shaper, huh? Framer and shaper. So, in other words, Aztecs, Mayans, Incans all had this same belief. Force, cosmic energy, Ruach, spirit. Equally, everyone knows that Omi means two, all right? So, we're just talking two cosmic energies. Let's get it right here. Whilst it is true that primary sources do not mention Ometeato directly, and we wonder why. A large majority of past and present Mesoamerican historians and scholar, uh, scholars, as we show below, do often quote sources that refer to an original celestial creator couple. Huh? Create a couple, huh? Albeit with a different name. <gasps> wow. Often quoted are the Nahua uh, informants of, could that be Friar, which we know were early Jesuits? Bernardino, San Hagen, all right. Sahagan, all right, Florentine Codex, all right, uh, just a remake of all our scriptures, huh? Our writings, our whole heritage, a remake. Watch this, watch this. The Florentine Codex uh, of the all important ritual speeches delivered by Aztec midwives, midwives on the birth of newborns. And on the cutting of the unbiblical cord. Check this out. This is what they said. Whenever a child was being born in our culture. Precious necklace. Precious feather. Wow. Alright. It is not a valve. Matter of fact, I got natural coming. Alright. Uh, we got I got some cons with me. Natural by law. Uh Con drop, all right. Uh, who else we got? Uh, who else I bring in? Prince David. All right, so I put together a little compilation uh, between natural by law, con drop, and Prince David. All right, we cooking. Precious necklace, precious feather, precious green stone, precious bracelet, precious turquoise. That were created in the place of duality. In the place of duality. The place above the nine Shamains. What? Thy mother, thy father. Ometicutely. Omesihawatu. The heavenly woman formed thee, created thee, sent thee. Oh, really? Sent thee. Now keep that in mind, all right? Let's rock. Let's rock. Let's cook. This is a pre recording, by the way, all right? Free my nigga now, inspired. Genesis. All right, so. Where can we find Big Mama? Can we find her in the beginning? What y'all think? In the beginning, Hawa created the heavens, Shamaims, and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, all right? And darkness was upon the face of the deep. 
All right, so we know Big Papa, all right, was there. Abba, right? Who else was there? See that? And the Ruach, all right, the feminine, all right, let us make men in our own image, all right? The masculine and the feminine. All right, the Ruach, the inward, all right, the unseen. Was hovering above the face of the waters. All right. Let's jump in Isaiah. Let's jump in Isaiah, all right? 48. Oh, man, I'm all off, man. I'm tripping. 15 to 16. All right? So can we precept what we just read? And we only listen when the Most High is speaking. I, even I, have spoken, says the Most High. Yes, I have called him. I have brought him or her. And his or her way will prosper. All right, we're going to get into ancient dyads. Come near me. Now, Big Papa is speaking. Come near me. Hear this. I, Big Papa, Abba, have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was. I, Big Papa, was there. And who else? And now the Most High, Hawa, and his Ruach, Amma. Big mama, huh? Have sent me. Sent thee. So big mama did what? She sent big papa back to go get her children. The heavenly woman formed thee, created thee, sent thee. Let's go. Omer failed. Perhaps the most notorious example of the vocabulary of conquest is the alleged Mexica deity known as Omer Veil. Uh -huh. Most students of Mesoamerican history were introduced to the idea of Ometeo through the writings of Miguel Leon Portilla and Angel Maria Garibe. All right. Both Portilla and Garibe promoted the use of Ometeo as a way of fusing the concepts of the creator couple, Ometecutli and Omesiwa, into a singular creator god of the Me Of the Mexican people. Ah, uh, you see that? So... They want to take the two and fuse them. They're going to try all kind of trickery. All right. And this is what Catholicism did. Let's rock. Let's cook. The Mexica. In his book, Aztec Philosophy, Portilla describes Ometeo as the god of duality and the true god through which all that exists is conceived. You see that? You see that, ladies and gentlemen? Don't that sound a lot like the power of the Old Testament? Let's go. Cool. However, many Mesoamerican scholars consider Leon Portilla and Garibay's translations of classical Nahuatl texts unreliable. See that? Especially regarding the elusive. 
All right. And so this is nothing but an attempt to disconnect, disconnect you all right, from your power, from your parents above. This is the disconnect. All right. Keeping in mind, all right, in scripture, they said they're hiding their face. All right. What are they doing now? They're hiding their face only to show it sometime here in the near future. Let's go. For example, on more than one occasion, Orthea replaces the god of Christianity with Ometheo when no such reference to the alleged Mexica deity appears in the original Nahuatl text. We wonder why. In Garibay's 1979 translation of André Cavet's Histoire du Mexique, he takes the sentence, In the 13th and final, there was a god named Beotli, which means two gods, and a goddess named Omesintal, which means two goddesses. And he transforms that sentence. All right, now, so before Nine get back to doing his thing, I just want to bring out this has nothing to do with the four creator gods, all right? And we're talking wind, uh, water, earth, fire, ether. And so this attempt right here was, did I say that right? Fire, earth. Water, ether. Yeah, so ether would be wind, all right. And so this is an attempt right here, right, to turn the creator couple into two gods and two goddesses. All right, but we're going to touch on the four creator gods that came from Ometeato. And again, keeping in mind, we're dealing with titles. This was their attempt to understand your history your heritage let's cook say let's cook into in the 13th and highest there was a god named Ometeo, which means two gods and a goddess named Omesinta, which means two goddesses mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so when we take the vet's passage into context it is clear he is referring to the creator couple, Omepegutli and Omesiwa, who are... You see that? And so, they flip-flopped, okay, well, we're going to make it into one, because we can't have two. Ah, scratch that. We're going to make it into four. Two goddesses and two gods. You see what I'm saying? Keep in mind, they was making this shit up as they went. They didn't have no ma they didn't know what the master plan was. The most high had the master plan. The most high said he would discontinue you from your heritage. He said, uh, they said that they were going to hide their face from you. Hmm? We're said to reside in the 13th celestial level of All right. the Mexica cosmos. It's good. Cool. Bay simply introduced Ometeo into the sentence out of thin air. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, this mention of Ometeo is removed from the 1985 edition and replaced with Ometeo-Gutli. You so see that? You see that? Seems like whoever did this updated edition saw the, the mistake and corrected it. So that's an interesting little side note. Very oh, interesting. Yeah. Why did Portia and Garibe feel it necessary to invent descriptions of Ometeo where none existed? One would assume that abundant resources regarding Ometeo would be available for Portia and Garibe to draw from. After we wonder all, why. Would we wonder the why. the supreme god of the Mexica appear everywhere, considering its alleged importance within Mexica Cosmovision? However, Ometeo never appears in any pre Cuauhtémoc sources. As Professor Richard Haley notes, Ometeo is found as members of its cult incest everywhere. 
everywhere that is except in the primary sources. All right. That's a good burn. We assert that the Catholic invention of Omateo can be traced directly to the Italian text you see found that? on folio 1V of the Codex Rios. See that? The Catholic Church, huh? Keep that in mind. All right. This codex, which has been substantially modified by European interpretation, uh -huh. was likely created in 1549. It is here we find the only reference to a Mexica deity, even vaguely similar to Ometeo. Uh -huh. The text describes a deity called Ometeule as the creator of everything the first cause, uh -huh. which sounds suspiciously like the God of the Bible. See that? The text is accompanied by a drawing of this Homer Teule. However, an iconographic analysis identifies the figure as Tonacatecutli, uh -huh. the male aspect of the sacred creator couple Tonacatecutli and Tonacasiwa, known as the Lord and Lady, Lady of, of our, our substance. substance. All right, let's go. In this instance, the author of the Codex Rios separated the concept of Tonacatecutli from his female counterpart, you see thereby that? eliminating the... You see that? Okay, so let's make a mental one. No, 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 scratch this. Let's make a mental four. No, no, scratch this. Let's just separate them. Huh? <laughs> Good. Feminine aspect of the dualistic Mexica cosmovision. The author then renamed Tonacatecutli Ometeule, which would later become glossed as Ometeo by Portilla and Garibe, and described this newly minted concept as uh -huh. the creator of everything, What's the this? first cause. Called by another name, Ometeule. Copycats. Did you say something like Lord of Three Merits or Lord of Three? Three, huh? Now, What's this? This is an interesting choice considering that Ome in Nahuatl is the number two. Two, right? Three. It appears that Ometeo or Ometeule Come on. is yet another Catholic invention designed to introduce the monotheistic God of the Bible uh -huh. along with the Holy, Holy Trinity. Trinity. <laughs> All right, Con Con, you're rocking with the nine Ometiatu, part six, a conversation with Hawa. Let's go. Ometiat, a dual deity formed of Ometakatli and Omasehat. Ometiat was an Aztec creation deity who fathered four of the pantheon's most venerated deities, including Quetzalcoatl. In Aztec mythology, Ometiat was a binary deity comprised of the husband and wife Duomotocatli, Omasihat who was responsible for the creation of the universe. The Aztecs believed that prior to Ometiat creating themselves, the universe was unknowable, and for all intents and purposes did not exist. You see that? Long, cool. long ago, before even time had come to be, uh -huh. there was Ometiot, the dual god. Ometiot was made by the union of the god Tonecatecutli, and the goddess Tony Casehua, the that? Lord and Lady of our sustenance. Our sustenance. And so, Ometeoro was both one and two at the same time. See that? They came to be out of nothing. And for a time, they were all that was in the whole of the universe. Was. For nothing else had yet been made. Tony Katekutle and Tony Casehuatl had four children. Four there was Red Sipe Totec, the Flayed God, God of the Seasons See and that? the things that grow upon the Earth. Black is Katlapoka, Smoking Mirror, God of the Earth. Of the Earth. See that? White Quetzalcoatl, Moon Serpent, God of Air. And Either. Blue Huitzilopochtli, Hummingbird of the South, God of War. The God children lived in the 13th heaven with their parents. Their parents? Huh? <laughs> All right, so this is your yin and yang. All right? This is the source of it. This is the source of your swastika. This is the symbol of duality. All right? You cannot have one without the other. Show me someone that was born 
without a mom that didn't give birth. Show me someone that was born of two females. You can't do it. And the line that binds the two together, that brings the two together, is the law. And we're just talking natural law. I watch this. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, Re the son of Buzai, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Kibar. And the Come hand on. of the Lord was there upon him. Come on. Now it came to pass in the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Kibar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the Watch color this. of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Watch this. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. Huh? Four creator gods, huh? That stems out of the power source of Ometiatu. All right, let's cook this again. Let's cook this again. Cook. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself. Most and a brightness right? was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came huh? the likeness of four living creatures. All right, y'all, let's get the drop. Let's get the drop. We're digging on Omentiatu. Now, I don't want to take credit for this, uh, this piece of footage right here. I snatched this off YouTube. Uh, forget the guy's name. My bad. Uh, fair use. But I thought it was very, uh, very prevalent, right? Without a, without a doubt, the most popular misconception or lie regarding our people is that we worship several gods, all right? Which is a bold-faced lie. All right, history books are filled with descriptions of rain gods and sun gods, and you know, you know what kills me, right? How in the hell? would we be able to keep up with all those gods that we supposedly worship? You see what I'm saying? Like, we bowing down and, and nudging each other. Hey, who we praying to? What's his, what's his name? Oh, yeah, okay, my bad. Like, it don't make sense. Now they want to throw human sacrifice on us, all right? And we got receipts out of primary sources that says that the only humans we sacrifice we sacrifice was the damn land invaders they damn selves that's rock it's cool mm -hmm. and we're telling your story right because this is a holy people unto the most high Who they set above all other nations. And are to abide by a law. Which is natural law. 
Ain't that some kind of Hebrewish? Just saying. You're looking at the Hebrews. Actually, nothing could be further from the truth. Facts. We agree. The absurd idea that our ancestors were. You see that? Came from another source. All right. This is a part of the Most High disconnecting you from your heritage, Israel. All right. This is one of the methods as to where they would be able to hide their face. All right. All right, again, this is not my work. I don't want to take credit for it. All right. Everything Catholicism, Christianity was borrowed from your ancestors, all right? We're talking Popo Vu, which is the source of Genesis, right? See that? Just a male, right? No female, no mama. As if it doesn't take two to tango, right? Fear, all right? Death. Now, I want you to keep that word in mind, all right? This word here, fear. Keep that in mind. We're going to get into ancient diets, all right? That's going to be one of the questions that we ask our parents above. All right, I can buy that. I can buy that. All right, come on, come on, come on. Ometiatu, part six, y'all. Let me get this. This dual energy permeates the cosmos and can be found in the smallest of atomic particles. You see that? In the philosophies of the Anahuac people, this energy, the creator of all creation, is known as Ometiatu. Ome means two. Tiato translate as cosmic energy. So we're just talking two cosmic energies. All right, let's touch and agree. All right, this shit about just one man just up there by himself. Man, we need to stop that shit. We need to stop that shit. That shit is over with. All right, and they use science to try to explain what the wonders of the works of your parents above, all right? You have two eyes, two ears, lips, nostrils, hands, feet, arms, legs, ovaries, testicles, digestive systems, nervous system, lungs, blood cells, huh? All right, this is what we're saying. It takes two. Can't no man and man give birth to creation. Can't no woman and woman. See that? Every time we do this, we're pretty much exercising the name. The manner in which we breathe is dual, in and out. <gasps> all right, we're dealing with titles, all right, but we're going to get to the name because it's just as equally as important. Then once you get your hawa on, then you get your what? 
dual heartbeat. Do do. Do do. Do do. Huh? It may be explained that the principle of the existence of cosmic breaths is not new, and that it is to be found in the cosmogonies of the Orient. It has, here in particular, been borrowed from a French translation of Hindu texts in which the movement of the sun was said to respond to the influence of universal streams of breath. The author has adapted this theory to existing circumstances, thus permitting the specific respiratory nature of these cosmic breaths to be discovered. This fact is completely demonstrated apart from the obvious parallel of the phases of inspiration and expiration rhythmically governing the lengths of days and nights and the height of the sun, by a comparison with another factor which is the pause existing between inspiration and expiration. All right, cons. So I got in some cons. I brought some cons with me uh, to help me cook. Uh, so I did like a little compilation. Uh, so I present to you uh, Natural by Law, Prince David, and Condrop. Let's go. I wanted to highlight in its uh, most ancient, you know, original form from the Semitic hieroglyph, right? that was recovered and studied um, this information that was presented this uh, ha lettering right or sound is the actual letter in Paleo Hebrew right we're digging on the alphabet right so um, yeah ancient name right so this is why I like this uh, as a source. So as I was saying, <clears throat> we're digging on ha, simply put, right, for the breath, right? Just straight up. And um, as you see, it's telling us that, you know, its definition, its meaning is breath simply. So it's simply to breathe, right? And um, below, we have what would seem as Vav, but it's not. When we're dealing with the Paleo, right? When we're dealing with the Paleo, right? Like that Paleo talk tongue, right? The Paleo, right? The ancient, right? It's Wa. And that Wa sound, right? As you can see, by the symbols is backed by a feather now it has many different meanings right <clears throat> but you know we can take away from simplicity in hieroglyph format and by ancient hebraic lettering right no hijack right we don't see no dots right we're not dealing with none of that right no 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 uh, Yiddish, right? So as we see it, it says Wa, right? And it's saying that it's a feather, okay? So, um, yeah, fam, we're going to go ahead and we're going to dig on this for a bit. And uh, I hope you guys find the information, you know, informative and much hop to the tribe. Um, when we put this together, Right? We have ha, wa, right? The breath and the feather. For Hukma, which is the worker of all things, taught me. For in her is an understanding ruach, kadush, akkad only, manifold, subtle, lively, clear, undefiled, plain, not subject to hurt, loving the thing that is good quick, which cannot be let it, ready to do good, kind to man, steadfast, 
sure, free from care, having all power, overseeing all things, and going through all understanding, pure, and most subtle spirits. For wisdom, hukmah, is more moving than any motion. She passes and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath, the neshama of the power of Yahuwah, and a pure influence flowing from the esteem of the Almighty. Framer, shaper, so they just say God, right? In Christianity, they just say God, or in Islam, they just say Allah. You think about, you know, one man you know, by himself doing things by himself, right? <laughs> But yet you have a house and you try to, you know, your house is a manifestation of the house that's above you, right? What house is above you with just one lonely man by himself walking to and fro? Your mama is always there. Mama is always there, man. When you talk framer and shaper, what they call... Let's get it from here. Let's get it from here. Here we go. In the Kishi language, Zako, Tako, and Bito, frame and shape, right? The first one who makes something by putting things together. So we're going to finish putting things together with this Hebrew alphabet, this Pictopaleo. Right, like a stone or adobe, a meal from various ingredients. That's what we call wisdom today, right? You got the wisdom to put the meal together to figure it out to fortify the kingdom. Solomon is praying for the ability to fortify the kingdom, to put the meal, to put the ingredients together to form a meal, to form a strong kingdom. Ha is your breath, your revelation. By revealing, right, the Han Hebrew, let's go. So you got your strong power going into the house, gathering, right? Aleph, bat, ga. Aleph, bat, ga. Daw. You went through a door together as a tribe. Then <gasps> you got to you gotta look, right? Somebody gave you a look, right? You got a breath. Your revelation. That's mama, Why wow, is the masculine, like they say, secure, a hook or a tent peg. What do you do with a tent peg? You have to pound it into the soil, into the earth. We're talking about the earth. We're talking about, you know, mother of the, uh, of the green earth, right? So your framer, One who makes something by putting things together, right? Wisdom from various ingredients. Your shaper refers to one who makes something by modeling, modeling. Pottery from clay, right? I formed you. I formed you, right? I shaped you. You're shaped in the vibe, the vibe, the vibration shape, right? Or a sculpture from carved stone that's given shape to an otherwise amorphous substance. The framer and shaper are the most frequently mentioned gods involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants. Man, I remember the Papuva, the Maya Kishe root, the root document, my nagi. So the framer and the shaper are the most frequently mentioned power involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants. Their names imply the creation involved giving frame and shape to matter that already existed rather than conjuring something out of nothing. So you're talking about the energy that already is, right? This pair of powers was so important that soon after the Spanish conquest, Father Domenico de Vico, de Vico used their quiche names to refer to the God of the Old Testament. 
body back for the illusion. So the God of the New Testament has a different name than the God of the Old Testament. The God of the Old Testament is referred to as this pair, right? This framer and shaper, but not the God of the New. Why did Father uh, Domenico de Vico use their root names? Quiche means root, root names to refer to the power of the Tanakh and not this new, new, excellent new tune. Why did he separate like that? Why did he say there's a separate God of the Old Testament? Why did they bring us the new? Oh, I mean, it's body bag for the illusion. Because we're not talking about the serpent, my nag. We're talking about the dragon, which is the spirit. But let's go, because we're just telling our story, man. Let's go. So we went through this, you know, strong power. Say it with me. Aleph or El. Bot. Ga, Da, Ha, Wa, Za, right? By the time you got to your Za, your food, my naga, by the time you got to your food, by the time things were cut off, you already had your Ha, Wa, and it's right there in your story. We're telling your story. So when we get our Ha, Wa, we're not making things out of the thin blue air. It's right there. In the fifth and the sixth letter before you got your Zion, Zion, Zion and Zion, 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 Hawa. Then you get your Zion, your revelation, your secure revelation, your breath of security, my God. Then you can take that knowledge of knowing Picto Paleo Hebrew, Hawa, fifth and sixth letter, and say, oh, that's where they're getting their Yahweh. <laughs> Hawa is the earlier form of hey, I was, or to exist, the one who is existing. Then you take that and you say, oh, so every time they're saying Lord, Lord in the Bible is going back to a primitive root word, ha, Hawa, what they say, hey, ya, which we just got. <laughs> that Hawa, Hawa. It's earlier than Haya. Got it. And now they're putting their Yah, which we just talked about the Yahs and the Yods, and that you got to choose your Yah because the Yah ain't the Yod or the you. Let's go. To be, to become, to come to pass, to exist. Got it, to become. And it's, it's structured within, you know what I'm saying, all the script, you know, when it... Anything that is or anything that is established, you don't have to add a ya in front of establishment. By the time, you know what I'm saying, Moshe said, you know, what should I call you? What should I tell the tribe to call you? Exodus 3, Hawa says, I am. Tell them what? That I am has sent you. Not ya, I am. Just simply I am. Why can't we keep it simple? Because simple is the clearest path. That simple I am is existence, is the primitive root verb, what they call heya, which is, you know, the latter form, as we know, hawa, 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 man, hawa, and, you know, I dropped this link, so y'all got it, I had to find it again, I had to PDF it myself, because they took it off the internet, <laughs> they took it off the net, man. Let's get it from here, man. Hawa, God, creator, is the key to a host of linguistic forms. While El, a common Shemitic word for God, is well remembered in the Bible. Hawa, the ancient name for the creator, is not. The reason is simple. When the Israelites were given Yahweh, right? So now they're throwing a Yahweh. But were they ever given Yahweh? He just said... He just said, <laughs> it is easily identified form of Hebrew verb. It is the most ancient name. So what name were they given? Yahweh. See, you got to dodge the hijack. Because they want to give you a new name. Now, who who, who needs a new name, Anagi? Moses don't get in. No one else has a new name. Why would they have to call Hawa a new name? They learn to forget the old Hawa. 
So is that a good thing that they get a new name and forget the old Hawa? And Hawa is everywhere. Hawa is everywhere. Wa, Hawaii, Hawa is everywhere, Managi. Everywhere, you know, in your indigenous history. All right, y'all, we're back. Uh, this is a conversation with Hawa, our mother and father above. And so we have our parents here today, uh, Tawada, for um, sitting down and talking uh, with us. Now, I have some general questions. Uh, nothing uh, too extravagant. Uh, and I'm talking to the audience. Uh, this is just an attempt for us to understand the nature of our parents above. And so I'm coming out of a book called A Conversation with God by Neil Donald Welsh. Shall we? Okay, parents above, first question. What, what are the methods of communication? Uh, uh, let's say, what would be uh, some of the ways uh, that you would communicate? And perhaps to who? I talk to everyone. All the time. The question is not to whom do I talk. But who listens? Hmm. First, let's exchange the word talk with the word communicate. It's a much better word, a much fuller, more accurate one. Okay. When we try to speak to each other, me to you, you to me, we are immediately constricted by the unbelievable limitation of words. For this reason, I do not communicate by words alone. In fact, rarely do I do so. The most common form of communication is through feeling. Feeling is the language of the soul. Hmm. If you want to know what's true for you about something, look to how you're feeling about it. Feelings are sometimes difficult to discover, and often even more difficult to acknowledge. Yet hidden in your deepest feelings is your highest truth. The trick is to get to those feelings. I will show you how. Again, if you wish. I also communicate with thought. Hmm. Thought and feelings are not the same, although they can occur at the same time. In communicating with thought, I often use images and pictures. For this reason, thoughts are more effective than mere words as tools of communication. Mm. In addition to feelings and thoughts, I also use the vehicle of experience as a grand communicator. Mm. Finally, when feelings and thoughts and experience all fail, I use words. Words are really the least effective communicator. They are most open to misinterpretation, most often misunderstood. Why is that? Mm -hmm. It is because of what words are. Words are merely utterances, oh. noises that stand for feelings, thoughts, and experience. They're symbols, oh. signs, insignias. They're not truth. Oh. They're not the real thing. Words may help you understand something. Experience allows you to know. Yet there are some things you cannot experience. So I've given you other tools of knowing, and these are called feelings. And so too, thoughts. Mm. Now the supreme irony here is that you've all placed so much importance on the word of God, and so little on the experience. In fact, you place so little value on experience that when what you experience of God differs from what you've heard of God, you automatically discard the experience and own the words, mm. when it should be just the other way around. Wow. Your experience and your feelings about a thing represent what you factually and intuitively know about that thing. Words can only seek to symbolize what you know and can often confuse what you know. These, then, are the tools with which I communicate. Yet they are not the methods, for not all feelings, not all thoughts, not all experience, and not all words are from me. 
Many words have been uttered by others in my name. Mm. Many thoughts and many feelings have been sponsored by causes not of my direct creation. Many experiences result from these. The challenge is one of discernment. Wow. For my purpose will not be thwarted, nor my will be ignored. You will get the message. Nice, nice. Okay, uh, wow. All right, uh, question number two. Uh, again, these are just some general uh, questions, uh, you know, to the audience. Now, we know that in Scripture, you guys are hiding your face from us, right? And we know that you're going to show it again in the near future. But just for the sake of the question, why don't you reveal yourselves uh, to the inhabitants of the world? That would be impossible. Okay. For I have no form or shape you understand. Hmm. I could adopt a form or shape that you could understand, but then everyone would assume that what they have seen is the one and only form and shape of God rather than a form or shape of God, one of many. Hmm. People believe I am what they see me as rather than what they do not see. But I am the great unseen, not what I cause myself to be in any particular moment. In a sense, I am what I am not. It is from the am notness that I come, and to it I always return. Hmm. Yet when I come in one particular form or another, a form in which I think people can understand me, people assign me that form forevermore. Okay. And should I come in any other form to any other people, the first say, I did not appear to the second because I did not look to the second as I did to the first, nor say the same things. So how could it have been me? You see, then it matters not in what form or in what manner I reveal myself. Whatever manner I choose and whatever form I take, none will be incontrovertible. Mm. There are still those who would say it is of the devil okay. or simply someone's imagination or any cause other than me, if I revealed myself as God Almighty, King of heaven and earth, and moved mountains to prove it, there are those who would say, it must have been Satan. Thanks. And such is as it should be. For God does not reveal God's self to God's self from or through outward observation, but through inward experience. Mm. And when inward experience has revealed God's self, outward observation is not necessary. Mm. And if outward observation is necessary, inward experience is not possible. If then revelation is requested, it cannot be end. For the act of asking is a statement that it is not there, that nothing of God is now being revealed. Such a statement produces the experience. For your thought about something is creative and your word is productive and your thought and your word together are magnificently effective in giving birth to your reality. Therefore shall you experience that God is not now revealed. For if God were, you would not ask God to be. Wow. Okay. 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 Uh, all right. Uh, Oh, okay. So, our uh, third question. Uh, this is uh, very generic in a sense, but I want to go ahead and because you know I know it's it's, it's you know uh, a broad range of people that might view this video, right? And so, uh, what would okay? Let me ask this: How exactly does prayer work this is a question which has been asked through the ages and has been answered whenever it has been asked mm -hmm. yet you have not heard the answer or will not believe it the question is answered again in today's terms and today's language thusly you 
will not have that for which you ask, nor can you have anything you want. This is because your very request is a statement of lack, mm. and you're saying you want a thing only works to produce that precise experience wanting in your reality. The correct prayer is therefore never a prayer of supplication, but a prayer of gratitude. Mm. When you thank God in advance for that which you choose to experience in your reality, you, in effect, acknowledge that it is there, wow. in effect. Wow. Thankfulness is thus the most powerful statement to God, an affirmation that even before you ask, I have answered. Mm. Therefore, never supplicate, appreciate. Wow. Nice, nice. Okay, uh, Mother Father, Ancient Dyads. Now, I stumbled upon uh, Ancient Dyads and began to study, let's say, roughly uh, uh, six, seven years ago. Could you explain to the people the concept? of ancient dyads, right? And how important uh, they are to, uh, let's just say, you guys' creation. All human actions are motivated at their deepest level by one of two emotions, mm -hmm. fear or love. In truth, there are only two emotions, only two words in the language of the soul. These are the opposite ends of the great polarity which I created when I produce and your world as you know it today. These are the two points, the Alpha and the Omega. Mm. It was your parents who taught you that love is conditional. You have felt their conditions many times, and that is the experience you take into your own love relationships. It is also the experience you bring to me. From this experience, you draw your conclusions about me. Within this framework, you speak your truth. God is a loving God, you say. But if you break his commandments, he will punish you with the eternal banishment and everlasting damnation. For have you not experienced the banishment of your own parents? Wow. Do you not know the pain of their damnation? How then could you imagine it to be any different with me? You have forgotten what it was like to be loved without condition. You do not remember the experience of the love of God. Mm. And so you try to imagine what God's love must be like, based on what you see of love in the world. You have projected the role of parent onto God, and have thus come up with a God who judges and rewards or punishes, based on how good he feels about what you've been up to. But this is a simplistic view of God mm -hmm. based on your mythology. It has nothing to do with who I am. Wow. Having thus created an entire thought system about God based on human experience rather than spiritual truths, you then create an entire reality around love. It is a fear-based reality. This fear-based love reality dominates your experience of love indeed actually creates it. For not only do you see yourself receiving love which is conditional, you also watch yourself giving it in the same way. And even while you withhold and retreat and set your conditions, a part of you knows this is not what love really is. Still, you seem powerless to change the way you dispense it. You've learned the hard way you tell yourself, and you'll be damned if you're going to leave yourself vulnerable again. Yet the truth is, you'll be damned if you don't. By your own mistaken thoughts about love, do you damn yourself never to experience it purely? So too, do you damn yourself never to know me as I really am? Mm. Until you do. Mm. For you shall not be able to deny me forever. Wow. And the moment will come for our reconciliation. Ah. Every action taken by human beings is based in love 
or fear. Mm -hmm. Not simply those dealing with relationships. Decisions affecting business, industry, politics, religion, the education of your young, the social agenda of your nations, the economic goals of your society, choices involving war, peace, attack, defense, aggression, submission, determinations to covet or give away, to save or to share, to unite or to divide. Every single free choice you ever undertake arises out of one of the only two possible thoughts there are, a thought of love or a thought of fear. Fear, wow. fear is the energy which contracts, closes down, draws in, runs, hides, hoards, harms. Love is the energy which expands, mm. opens up, mm -hmm. sends out, stays, reveals, shares, yields. Fear wraps our bodies in clothing. Love allows us to stand naked. Fear clings to and clutches all that we have. Love gives all that we have away. Fear holds close. Love holds dear. Fear grasps. Love lets go. Fear rankles. Love soothes. Fear attacks. Love amends. Wow. Every human thought, word, or deed is based in one emotion or the other. You have no choice about this because there is nothing else from which to choose. But you have free choice about which of these to select. Mm. Yet I teach you this. When you choose the action love sponsors, then you will do more than survive. Wow. Then you will do more than win. Wow. Then you will do more than succeed. Mm -hmm. Then will you experience the full glory of who you really are. Mm and who you can be. To do this, you must turn aside the teachings of your well-meaning but misinformed worldly tutors Thanks. and hear the teachings of those whose wisdom mm. comes from another source. Yes, let me explain it to you this way. In the beginning, that which is, is all there was, and there was nothing else. Yet, all that is could not know itself because all that is is all there was and there was nothing else and so all that is was not for in the absence of something else all that is is not mm. this is the great is not is to which mystics have referred from the beginning of time now all that is new, it was all there was. But this was not enough, for it could only know its utter magnificence conceptually, not experientially. Yet the experience of itself is that for which it longed, for it wanted to know what it felt like to be so magnificent. Still, this was impossible, because the very term magnificent is a relative term. All that is could not know what it felt like to be magnificent unless that which is not showed up. Mm. In the absence of that which is not, that which is, is not. Do you understand this? I think so. All right. The one thing that all that is knew is there was nothing else. Mm -hmm. And so it could and would never know itself from a reference point outside of itself. Such point did not exist. Only one reference point existed, and that was the single place within the is not is, the am uh, not right, am. Uh, okay. Still, the all of everything chose to know itself experientially. This energy, this pure, unseen, unheard, unobserved, and therefore unknown by anyone else energy mm -hmm. 
chose to experience itself wow. as the utter magnificence it was. Wow. In order to do this, it realized it would have to use a reference point within. It reasoned quite correctly that any portion of itself would necessarily have to be less than the whole, and that if it thus simply divided itself into portions, each portion being less than the whole could look back on the rest of itself and see magnificence. Wow. And so all that is divided itself, becoming in one glorious moment that which is this and that, that which is, is that. that. For the first time, this and that existed, mm. quite apart from each other. And still, both existed simultaneously, as did all that was neither. Thus, three elements suddenly existed, that which is here, that which is there, and that which is neither here nor there, but which must exist for here and there to exist. It is the nothing which holds the everything. It is the non-space which holds the space. It is the all which holds the parts. Mm. Can you understand this? Are you following this? I think so. Uh, you made it quite simplistic. Uh, can we carry on? I'm going to go further. Okay. Now this nothing which holds the everything is what some people call God. Okay. Yet that is not accurate either, for it suggests that there is something God is not, namely everything that is not nothing. But I am all things seen and unseen. unseen. So this description of me as the great unseen, the no thing, or the space between an essentially Eastern mystical definition of God, is no more accurate than the essentially Western practical description of God as all that is seen. Those who believe that God is all that is and all that is not are those whose understanding is correct. Hmm. Okay, okay. Now, in creating that which is here and that which is there, God made it possible for God to know itself. In the moment of this great explosion from within, God created relativity, the greatest gift God ever gave to itself. Thus, relationship is the greatest gift God ever gave to you, mm. a point to be discussed in detail later. From the no thing, thus sprang the everything. As the elements of all raced forth, time was created. Mm. For a thing was first here, then it was there. And the period it took to get from here to there was measurable. Just as the parts of itself which are seen began to define themselves relative to each other, so too did the parts which are unseen. God knew that for love to exist and to know itself as pure love, its exact opposite had to exist as well. Wow. So God voluntarily created the great polarity, mm -hmm. the absolute opposite of love. Everything that love is not, what is now called fear. Mm. In the moment fear existed, love could exist as a thing that could be experienced. It is this creation of duality between love and its opposite, which humans refer to in their various mythologies as the birth of evil, the fall of Adam, the rebellion of Satan, and so forth. Just as you have chosen to personify pure love as the character you call God, mm -hmm. so have you chosen to personify abject fear as a character you call the devil. Some on earth have established rather elaborate mythologies around this event, complete with scenarios of battles and war, angelic soldiers and devilish warriors, the forces of good and evil, of light and dark. You have even imagined a god at war with this being, thinking that God solves problems the way you do. Finally, you have actually imagined that God could lose this war. 
This mythology has been mankind's early attempt to understand and tell others in a way they could understand, a cosmic occurrence of which the human soul is deeply aware, but of which the mind can barely conceive. Once in the physical universe, you, my spirit children, could experience what you know of yourself, but first you had to come to know the opposite. To explain this simply, you cannot know yourself as tall unless and until you become aware of short. Mm -hmm. You cannot experience the part of yourself that you call fat unless you also come to know thin. Taken to ultimate logic, you cannot experience yourself as what you are until you've encountered what you are, what not. You are not. Wow. It is in the act of choosing to be rather than simply being told that you are a part of God, that you experience yourself as being at total choice, which is what, by definition, God is. Mm. Yet, how can you have a choice about something over which there is no choice? You cannot not be my offspring, no matter how hard you try. But you can forget. Mm. You are, have always been, and will always be a divine part of the divine whole, a member of the body. That is why the act of rejoining the whole, of returning to God, is called remembrance. You actually choose to remember who you really are, or to join together with the various parts of you to experience the all of you which is to say, the all of me. Your job on earth, therefore, is not to learn, because you already know, but to remember who you are. First Baruch, chapter 2, verse 30. Remember, huh? For I knew that they would not hear us, right? Your parents above because it is a stiff necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. Huh? You know what I'm saying? Um, and so, you're the source of you and the carrying you, but the. Uh father and the mother but this beginning this this olive mem right here this two letter adamant is everything that's whether you believe whether you have faith whether you uh, um you know it is it is the whole picture from your mom from being formed in the womb all the way to and that truth knowing the truth it is the whole course olive mem is the two letter adamant of the entire construct of of uh all the words that are most important. But we get our mom from this one little letter. It's a double M. When you see an M that has the little Dagesh Forte in it, it, uh, it double speaks an M. You get a MM here. Not just a, just, not just Aleph Mem, but Aleph Mem. 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 Mem.